So today we're gonna to be working on the bus again. We're gonna be focusing on the rear area that I'm calling the kitchen. Basically food prep, uh, refrigerator, microwave, toaster oven, all that stuff, shelving to put it all together. I got the counter replaced back there. I had the Ikea table before, but that's all been replaced. We also run around, look for some appliances, and try to figure out, I don't know, design stuff on the fly, basically. I don't know why it's so hard to come up with words at the moment. <laughs> but anyways, the kitchen sink is gonna be kind of behind where the shower's at. That's not gonna be, uh, not gonna be installed for another week or two, probably. I'm gonna be getting water tanks and things to get that set up. I'm still waiting on a few more parts to completely finish the mounting of the toaster oven and microwave and all that, but there is enough to film and make a video out of, so here we go. Hopefully you enjoy. Well, here we are in the van again. It's still running good, actually. Don't know how long that'll last, but hey, whatever. Today, going to some, well, gonna do some appliance shopping. I'm trying to find a microwave, but very specifically, one that's smaller than one cubic foot, and also one that has, um, well, what they call inverter technology. Microwave technology has been relatively unchanged since they were invented, and they just have a giant transformer inside there that bumps the voltage way up, and, well, they have a huge inrush current, no matter how small the microwave is. And also with inverter microwaves, you can reduce the power level and actually reduce the amount of power that's being pulled out of the wall. So in my application, running a power inverter that is in the bus, I need to have something that has a soft start as opposed to just pulsing this giant, um, yeah, what's the word, transformer on and off constantly. So I'm gonna see if I can find something that's like 0.9 cubic feet or smaller, has inverter technology and costs 200 bucks at the most. I'm sitting outside of a Best Buy right now. I looked on their website real quick and they don't seem to have anything. But there's this mega store I've never been to called Standard TV and Appliance. They're all over the radio. Anyways, it's just down the road. So we're gonna go check it out and see if they have any microwaves. And here we are. Eh. Never been appliance shopping before. This is supposedly the place to go. So we shall see. Apparently the countertop microwaves are tucked back here in the corner. Um, no, these are inverter microwaves, but they're about the size I'm looking for, uh, 700 watts. Yeah, it's actually pretty good, I think. The main thing is, is where the vents are on them. Looks like it's over here on this side. Yeah, I'm gonna keep looking. Okay, I didn't realize that place was quite so hoity-toity. They had some little GE microwaves, but they were $170. And they're just the cheap, crappy ones that, I don't know, you'd see in a break room or something somewhere. I've been looking on Amazon. I can get for $10 cheaper, a 0.8 cubic foot Panasonic inverter microwave. But my thought was shipping appliances from Amazon is hit or miss. I mean, if we think back to that dehumidifier and some other stuff I bought, everything always shows up broken. They do package microwaves pretty well. Anyways, they don't sell Panasonic here. Apparently, the they're good products. They're the only ones that make an inverter microwave, I guess, right now. But they don't sell them because a profit margin is not enough for paying for their lighting and carpeting and all the sales stuff in there. So, anyways... I think we're gonna roll the dice and just order a Panasonic miniature inverter microwave. I need to look at my list. I was gonna go to a home improvement store, maybe get some more lumber and some other things. But anyways, I'm gonna check my list and we'll see what's up, what's, uh, what's going on next. all the places that I wouldn't have thought to buy appliances. Apparently Home Depot has a bunch. So let's go check it out. Okay, so for 59 bucks, I think this will work fine. Yeah. It doesn't say the wattage anywhere on it as far as input, but 
it's probably a max of like 1200 watts being only 700 watt output so yeah i think this will work great Oakley dokley we have a 0.7 cubic foot magic chef microwave it was 57 bucks it's not an inverter one but you know to be honest these cheap crappy microwaves for that price if i have to buy a new one every six or eight months um i'll still consider it a win it's small enough that the inrush current won't be too insane and i think we should be all right i also grabbed a uh, two gang pvc wall mount box and a stainless outlet cover. I've been finding with these boxes that if you try to screw on the plastic outlet covers, they tend to crack. So this being stainless or metal or some sort of some sort of plated whatever, uh, it'll work a lot better, I think. So anyways, there we go. The inverter microwave that I was going to order on Amazon, I think it was $160 but it wouldn't have been able to be delivered for almost a week. And today is the day I set aside to actually do stuff. And I need to have the microwave I'm gonna use as I'm building the enclosures in the back of the bus where everything is going. I guess I haven't showed that yet. So I got the main back counter done. Uh, I got a couple more stops to make and then we're gonna head back and I'll show you what I've done so far. But uh, yeah, things are coming together. We're gonna to be autonomous with this thing here soon working on the uh, basic plumbing for the shower and a sink and stuff like that. So hopefully within about a week, week and a half, I should have the basic systems installed so I can be mobile with the thing. Well, that's a new one. Let's just throw something on the roof and not strap it down at all. <laughs> uh, welcome to Southeast Portland. All right, here we have a microwave. It's a little bit rainy outside, but uh, let's, ooh, probably should be careful doing that. Let's take a look inside and see what we got. So I picked up one of them off of the shelf and it sounded like something was rattling around inside. So I picked up a couple other ones just to see if they were also rattling and they were not. So here we are. Uh, this might be a two-handed operation. I'll be right back. Oh boy, does it smell like crazy chemical plastic. Ugh, gross. Wait a minute, what the heck is this? Uh, what? Why do I have a tin full of CDRs in here? Huh, well, we'll just ignore that for now. Ooh, what was this thing, $57? Yeah, it's got the, uh, it's got the little turntable thing jammed in there. It smells like molten burning plastic, but hey, you know. Sweet. More importantly, let's look at the back of this thing and see what our maximum input power is. 2450 megahertz, output 700 watts, What's the input? Oh, there we go. Input, 1,050 watts. Okay, cool, that'll do. It's got a, yeah, one of these flat cables that I'm not a huge fan of. Aha, I found it. So for proper, for proper ventilation, allow four inches between the top sides and rear. Okay, cool. I looked at a whole bunch of these things and some of them had really weird restrictions. Like some of them one side at all couldn't be blocked and then the other side could have a few inches but they needed 12 inches on the top. So yeah, this one, uh, four inches of clearance all the way around. Yeah, I think we should be good. Cool. Looking in the back here, this is what I've gotten done so far. I've got a few photos I can show you, but I basically framed this in with a two by six across the front, two by four in the middle and two by four in the back. And it's braced up along this wall over here and also along this thing, which is another reason I went with the two by sixes on this wall so I can mount stuff to it. And that allowed us to get rid of the support that was under that old Ikea table I was using down here. And now we can put some storage bins in here. Also, I found these, uh, these little Sterilite clear bins here and they fit perfectly up top. So I got a bunch of these so I can kind of put some kitchen stuff in there or whatever else. I just had a bunch of clothes and other stuff in trash bags up here, 
but we're gonna be getting rid of all that and just using these totes. So that should be, should be perfect for that. This is where the electrical ended. I'm gonna be continuing on that way. I've got a little section of board right here that's removable. I mean, technically anything is removable, I guess. But we're gonna run some flexible conduit back there and up, and then it's going to come in, and I think what I'm gonna do is put a four gang outlet right here in the corner. So that'll run the toaster oven, microwave, and fridge. Fridge is right here. And then over here on this side, I'm gonna put sort of a narrow, deep um, thing for shelves. And since we have a little bit of leftover mounting space here with this window, I think I'm gonna put a fold down counter that comes out to, I don't know, maybe about here or so. So I've got a surface I can fold down when I'm cooking stuff in there. Because I think, well, I haven't figured it out yet. I might push the toaster oven and everything back against the wall. I have to figure out the best place to put everything so I'm not wasting any room. But it'd be nice to have a place to set a couple of things while I'm ferrying things in and out of various cooking devices. But anyways, we'll figure it out. I haven't cleaned up my mess here yet, but I just finished running the rest of the electrical back here. So we've got our four gang outlet back here. The way it's set up, those two outlets are on two different circuits because fridge and other stuff. All right, so it's time to do two things. Verify our electrical works. Well, actually, I already checked it with a meter, so I know it's good. But let's see if our microwave functions. I've uh, got that thing plugged in there, so let's go ahead and fire up our inverter here and see what happens. we have a microwave. Does it have a light inside? Ooh, it does. Fancy. All right. Um, I think the next thing to do is going to be cooking frozen food in a microwave for the first time in the bus. <laughs> Obviously, I still need to uh, turn that down. Obviously, I still need to build the rest of the cabinetry and everything in here, but I figured that's where the outlet was going to go and I got everything tied in, but um, <laughs> I'm going to clean up this mess of, of uh, electrical tools and other things, and then uh, we will see how that works. Okay, well, we got the uh, garbage and tools picked up here, and what we're going to do is cook this broccoli and chicken thing. Before we do anything, though, right now, the inverter is passing through voltage from the extension cord that runs out here to the bus. And there's enough voltage drop and everything going on with that that we shouldn't run a microwave or something that pulls a lot of power because, yeah, reasons. So we're going to disconnect the grid from the inverter and that will allow us to run on batteries and that will, basically I can pull up to 3000 watts off the batteries and we'll be good. Let me, let me double check the inverter real quick. Okay, we have confirmation here that our AC input is disconnected. It says AC input priority mode. What that does is it transfers it through when it's connected. But when the AC is connected, you will see, well, actually here, I'll just show you. Let me turn it back on. There you go. It shows the grid going in and charging the batteries. So when we turn that off, it isolates everything from the grid and the inverter is what's supplying all the power. Here we go. These things normally take four and a half minutes with a fairly high output microwave. This thing only puts out like 700 watts. So I think five minutes is what we want. Okay. Sounds like a microwave. Let's check the inverter again. Okay, we're at 35, 36% load. I need to hook up like a clamp ammeter and some other monitoring so I can actually tell more about the power other than this arbitrary percentage that it's putting out. But uh, yeah, seems like it's working. Battery voltage. Yeah, so according to the manual, what the uh, microwave said it takes, like 1,050 watts or something like that. But uh, yeah, anyways, there we go. Okay, 700 watts is um, not a crazy amount, so I guess five minutes wasn't quite long enough. We'll do another minute. <laughs> Sweet. 
I've never been more excited to cook something in a microwave before. <laughs> How weird is that? Well, it's the next morning, a little bit more rainy today. As you can see, we've got, well, what is it? Storms coming. <laughs> Anyways, I need to go back to Home Depot or Lowe's and get some more stuff. I'm at a point with the kitchen stuff that I need some more brackets to come up with a mounting scheme for the toaster oven and fridge and microwave and all that. Oh, that reminds me. Hang on, I gotta add something to my list before I forget. Okay, got that added. Uh, also need to get another quarter sheet of plywood and then I think we should be good. I've got some diamond plate that's supposed to be delivered today. I guess I could look at that while I'm at the big box store. Anyways, let's hop in the van and um, go buy some more stuff. Okay, let's check our coolant here. Um, looks like it's about the same level that it has been. So, yeah. That, by the way, this is a pressurized coolant tank. There were a few people that commented, and from the angle of the video I took, it looked like it was just an overflow bottle. But this thing is actually part of the pressurized system. The radiator itself doesn't have any caps on it. Okay, I just pulled the cap off to relieve the pressure. It is interesting that it does hold pressure overnight. The level went up just a tiny bit, but yeah, I think we're good. Well, for now, obviously, just a patch until I figure out what to do with this thing. Yeah, just being nice to this thing seems to be working for now. Anyways, off to the big box store, I guess. Okay, here's what we're looking at. I think this is gonna be the final layout. I'm gonna have convection toaster oven thing down here, microwave up here, and we've got plywood going across here. We're gonna be covering this section as well. I've gotten to the point right now where I need to kind of pause putting everything together. This is just sitting here, it's not attached yet. But I got a bunch of brackets and stuff. I wound up going to Home Depot. But I got a bunch of brackets and things so I can tie down the fridge. I've got a whole system figured out for that. And then also I've worked out a way to mount down that little convection oven and the microwave as well. Now, before you freak out and notice that there's a toaster oven underneath a wooden thing right here and not much space, this is one of those cool touch ovens which means it doesn't get hot. It has a couple of ventilation holes on it. And I looked up the manufacturer's specifications and everything, and we are totally in spec installing it like this. Actually, it'll probably come over this way about an inch. But just for extra awesomeness, I've got a bunch of diamond plate and I'm gonna be lining the side, the top and the back of where this thing is with some diamond plate. And then there's also gonna be some ventilation holes and whatnot. So we won't have to worry about that thing getting hot and potentially causing a problem. But uh, a bunch of stuff on the floor, so I can't get over here. But I think this is an acceptable height for the microwave. Can reach that pretty easily. And then probably not today, but soon, I'm going to wall off this little section here. And we're just going to have a couple of little shelves that go in. But anyways, um, I think that's going to be the concept there. Oh. I suppose I could build a cabinet or something to put above the fridge. I think I'm going to leave that open just because the fridge does need uh, quite a bit of space in the back and over the top for airflow to happen. So anyways, yeah, there we go. Kitchen-y type area. Sweet. By the way, here are some of the brackets and stuff I got. I love Simpson ties. They've got a bunch of really cool stuff like this and then the narrow ones and some interior and exterior corner pieces. Got a bunch of tech screws, some D-rings, you know, all the good stuff. This here, um, probably not gonna be in this video, but this is gonna be a sort of a critical part of attaching the fridge. Underneath the bottom of it, there's a channel that goes all the way through. I'm gonna be attaching it in probably four and a half different ways, but this is gonna be one of them. This will basically slide through the very bottom channel on the fridge, which basically touches the surface it's sitting on, and then we can clamp each end down. Also gonna be doing a couple of other brackets to hold it in place. And just to finalize everything, just for good measure, gonna be running a ratchet strap around it. But I'm pretty confident it's not gonna be going anywhere. And the way I look at things, you can have any one or two of the attachment methods fail and still be okay, which, I don't know, stuff. But anyways, 
I'm gonna get to work here. Quick little update. I've got some of the diamond plate put in here. The pieces I ordered weren't quite big enough, so I'm gonna have to go grab some more of it tomorrow. But for the time being, the microwave is in fact locked down now. That thing is not going anywhere. I'm working on brackets for this. I've got that pretty much figured out. As far as the fridge goes, there's actually a kit that's made for this thing that has uh, some little pieces that lock the, um, I'm trying to say it, the feet on the front of it. And you can see there's a foot there and that kind of goes in and hooks it. And there's another thing that clips onto the back and holds it down. And then I'm gonna be doing that ratchet strap all the way around as well as on the top in the back, there's gonna be uh, another bracket that'll attach to the wall back there. I'm probably not gonna show any of that. It's kind of boring stuff, but rest assured, none of this is going anywhere, no matter how hard you slam on the brakes or whatever. It's kind of nice finally getting things closer to being wrapped up. I mean, years ago, I've converted a few buses in the past, not to like full on motorhomes, but I did some driving for different groups and bands and I've owned a number of buses over the years. Back then, I was able to do a conversion in a long weekend, but things weren't as expensive back then as they are now as far as lumber and all the other stuff and wiring and things you need to get. Plus, now I'm in a chair, and as it turns out, if I work too much, the, uh, the old body decides to push back sometimes. So anyways, it's nice getting this done and uh, being able to actually live in here and cook meals and do all that stuff. I've got a couple water tanks ordered. I'm going to go with two 55-gallon tanks, one for fresh water, one for gray water. I know it's better to have a slightly larger gray water tank, but for the size, well, for the space that I have down below here, that's going to work the best. I, I probably just won't fill the fresh water tank all the way or I don't know, whatever. We'll get it figured out. But things are coming together and um, yeah, I think we're going to call that good for now. Thanks for hanging out, and uh, I will see you guys in a couple of days.